What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to take a look at Mistral OCR and how to use it in order to parse complex PDF documents and convert them into high quality markdown. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to take a look at Mistral OCR in this video today, which is an AI model that allows us to parse complex PDF documents and produce high quality markdown as a result. So my goal for this video today is to show you how to do that, to show you what the results look like, and also to compare them to the more conventional approach of using something like Tesseract locally uh, to see that the quality is actually quite, uh, there, there's quite a big difference in quality. And this of course matters because nowadays what we do oftentimes when it comes to document processing or document extraction is, we have this first step of extracting the raw text from the document. So we have some PDF document, maybe it's an image, maybe it's a scan, maybe it's not a uh, text that is well formatted. And we need to take that, we need to parse it, we need to get some text output that we can feed into the next part of the pipeline, so to say, which is oftentimes a large language model. And then this large language model extracts data or automates some process uh, and we use something like structured output maybe to process the data or to extract the data. And the quality of the text that we feed into the large language model is very important. So large language models are very good when it comes to handling markdown. They're not so good when it comes to handling chaotic text. So this first step in the pipeline is quite important. And this is why something like Mistral OCR can be more useful uh, or better than something like Tesseract in terms of the quality of the output in general. So even at the end of the pipeline, this might have a pretty uh, large effect. So what we want to do first is we want to go to console.mistral.ai and here you want to create an account and you want to create an API key. Now I will say right away that this is not possible, at least using Mistral OCR is not possible if you don't connect a credit card. The pricing is extremely cheap. You pay I think $1 per 1000 pages. So you can try this with 10 cents if you want to. Um, but you will have to connect some payment method. It doesn't work otherwise. So some of you guys might not want to do that. You can just watch and see what the results look like and then you can decide. And those of you who want to do that, you can just uh, go along and do the same thing. You can code along. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go to API keys. We want to go to create new API key and we just want to create it and copy it. With this API key that you have created and copied, you want to create a file in your working environment. In my case now here, I'm working in a Jupyter Lab environment. For those of you who don't know what Jupyter Lab is or what Jupyter Jupyter notebooks are in general, um, you have these individual cells of code that you can run, I can do something like print, hello, and I can execute this as an individual cell, then I can write some other code, execute this cell, and then go back and execute this one again. So it's just more uh, dynamic, and it's more flexible when you write code. Um, this is the environment I'm using. And what I have here, you cannot see it right now, but I can show you that in the terminal. I have a file called dot env and this dot env file contains one line and this one line is like this mistral api key is equal to whatever the api key is so i have my api key in a dot env file and i suggest you do the same unless you want to put it in your code which is of course not something i'm going to do while recording but if you just want to play around you can also just put the api key into your code so what we also want to do is we want to open up a command line and install two Python packages. One is obviously Mistral AI and the other one, at least if you don't want to just copy paste your key into the code, you also want to use the package python env which is going to load the .env file. So make sure you have these two installed and then we can start by saying import os from uh, .env import load.env and then from Mistral AI import Mistral AI. Sorry, not Mistral AI, but Mistral. Um, all right, so what we want to do now is we want to create a client and this client will allow us to upload files into the cloud. Now, by the way, what I have here is I have an attention PDF, which is the attention is all you need paper, feel free to use whatever document you want to parse. I'm just going to use this as an example here because we have some formulas and tables. Uh, and math symbols and images. So this is quite complex. And it's not going to be the perfect output, I can tell you that right away, but compared to what we get from other methods, it's going to be very high quality. So we want to start by first of all, loading the API key. So we want to run the load.env function here. And then we want to say, 
client is equal to mistral. And then here API underscore key is equal to and now again, if you want to just paste the API key, do it here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to load it from the environment, OS get env mistral API key, like this. This creates the client and now we can easily go ahead and upload the file, get a file ID as a response or get, uh, yeah, get a file ID first and then we can create a URL. Then we can take this and say that we want to do OCR on this particular object. So what we do here now, first of all, is we say upload it. File is equal to client files upload. And here now we specify that the file is going to be this dictionary here. And we're going to say the file name um, is attention.pdf. And the file content is going to be open uh, attention PDF in reading bytes mode. We don't have to read, it's going to read uh, on its own. And then we need to say the purpose of this file upload is to later use this for OCR. So I'm going to say purpose equals OCR. This is going to upload the file. And what we can get from here now is we can get the file URL. So we can say file URL is equal to client files get signed URL. File ID is equal to uploaded file.id. That is going to give us the URL for the file. And what we need to do with this URL now is we need to make another request where we say get this file from this URL and do OCR and give me the text as a response. So I can say response is equal client dot OCR dot process. And then model is equal to mistral dash OCR dash latest. So just use the latest model. And then we want to say document is equal, let's maybe use some spaces here uh, to a dictionary and this dictionary will have the keyword type. The type is going to be set to document URL. And then we're going to say document URL is equal to file URL dot URL. And we'll want to make sure that we include the images. So we want to say include image base 64 is equal to true. What this basically means is that the images are going to be included as a data URI. So it's going to be inline information, we don't need to load the file from somewhere else, the whole information of the image or for the image is going to be saved in the code or in the text uh, encoded with base 64. Uh, that is basically what we're getting here. And then we get a response. And this response is first of all, an object an OCR response object, I can just print it. As you can see, we have some image data here. Uh, quite a bit of stuff. And when I scroll up, we can also see text. But a better way to look at this is to say, response dot pages, page zero, for example, give me page zero, and now I get the content of page zero also with the tech uh, also with the image, as you can see. Um, and I can also say give me the markdown version of that. So give me just a markdown of this page. So of the first page, and then I get the text only here, as you can see. But of course, we're not just interested in looking at this in terms of or looking at this um, in our Jupyter notebook instance, we want to also export this to a markdown file to see what it looks like. So I'm going to say here import base 64 so that we can decode this into bytes. And then I'm going to define a function here, which I'm going to call data URI to bytes data URI. And I'm going to say header, or actually, we can say placeholder uh, encoded is equal to data URI split comma and one, and then we want to return base 64 decode or b64 decode encoded. 
This takes the base64 encoded uh, string and decodes it into bytes. This is what we get out of this function. Then I want to have a second function export image, where I'm going to say give me the image, which is an image object from this response. And we want to say parsed image is equal to data URI to bytes. And here we're going to say image dot image underscore base 64. And then with open um, image ID. So that's the file name, the file name is going to be the ID of the image that we have here. And we want to write in bytes mode as file, and we're going to say just file dot write parsed image that is going to write the bytes into that file. And finally, I want to say with open output dot MD in writing mode SF, I want to say for page in response dot pages, write the content of this pages markdown. So just write the markdown content. And then for image in page dot images, we want to export the image using our function. So it's going to be linked to the markdown file, obviously. And basically, that's it. Now, if I refresh here, you can see I have the images here. And I also have the output MD. If I double click on it, you can see this is pretty well formatted markdown. And also, I can right click here in Jupyter lab, and I can say show markdown preview. And you can see now I have attention is all you need. I have the image. And I have quite a bit of text. I have all the headings. I have again images here. I have also mathematical sim uh, symbols, as you can see here. So LaTeX. Uh, basically, I also have um, yeah, all sorts of formulas. And I should also have tables somewhere as you can see here, well formatted. I think there are some problems, though. I'm not sure if this is I mean, here we have some rendering that didn't work. Um, and also, I'm not sure if this table here, maybe it's actually correct, but maybe it's messed up a little bit. So I'm not sure about that. But all in all, you can see that this is a pretty high quality of parsing if you consider that we just, uh, yeah, put a PDF into it. Now, let's see what we would get here. Um, if we were to do it with Pi Tesseract. So you don't need to install this if you don't want to try this on your own, I can just show you what it does on my system. If you want to follow along, you have to install Tesseract on your system, then you also have to install Pi Tesseract. So it's not uh, as straightforward as just installing a Python package. But let's go and say import Pi Tesseract, or actually, I'm not going to even type this because I don't want to waste your time with that. I'm just going to copy paste this here. And essentially, I'm opening the file here in reading bytes mode, I'm reading the bytes, I'm converting uh, the I'm getting the images here from the bytes. And then I use a custom config for Tesseract, I'm running the command basically with these flags. And then I get all the text, I also eliminate the null terminating bytes, or I replace them with nothing. And the PDF text that we get out of this is not comparable to the markdown that we get from Mr. OCR. So I think this is way superior, the the Mr. OCR output, it also takes longer, as you can see, because it's running locally. But of course, you can also do this on a server with more resources. But after a while, we should be able to get some text, hopefully. And then you're going to see first of all, the images are not there. Uh, second of all, in general, maybe let's print this properly. So let's go and say print. Um, but you can see we have the text, it seems to work, but we don't really have any mathematical code here. We don't have any uh, LaTeX notation. I hope this is how it's pronounced. Um, we don't have any advanced mathematical symbols here. We don't have any images that is not the same as this. This is way better. So that is superior in terms of quality. Um, now, last but not least, what I want to show you is I want to show you how to do that also with online files. So you don't have to have the file on your own system, you can also refer to a link, uh, quite straightforward, actually, it's not really any different, you just have to copy this here, I'm going to just copy it and paste it down here. Uh, only difference here being that a document URL is not your file URL, but whatever you choose to, for example, here, I can just um, copy and paste the archive link to this 
specific paper to the attention is all you need paper. I can run this and the result is going to be the same. It just doesn't take the PDF from Mistral, it takes it from archive. And the rest is the same. I can still go response, uh, pages, zero, markdown. Same idea. So yeah, this is how you do um, OCR. This is how you can extract information, how you can parse complex documents, PDF documents with Mistral OCR. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and bye.